Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Roswell, New Mexico. So a lot of interesting things went down in this episode. Obviously, Kyle ended up finding out from Liz the truth about everything that's going on with Isabel, her being the one that killed you know, Rosa and the other girls. Uh, what was interesting, though, is like, Obviously, when Kyle ends up stabbing her with the uh, needle, I was like, oh, man, that's crazy because you could tell Kyle was getting super pissed about it. But it's like, no, I mean, I'm sure that was still him in the process of trying to figure things out. But it was mainly because Isabel had pushed him to do it. I was like, oh, I, mean, I was actually kind of surprised. But I was like, oh, man, this is, oh, man, Kyle, why are you doing such a dick thing? It's like, no, he wasn't in control. She influenced him, which kind of is interesting because she doesn't outright control people's thoughts. She more so influences them. I love that she's like, I'm an influencer, like, you know. Like that girl Riri, which I'm assuming is that supposed to be Rihanna. Rihanna's the only Riri I know. Like, I mean, celebrity wise, Riri. I mean, guys, obviously, like, comic book wise, there's the whole uh, Riri for um, Iron Man situation, but, you know, I would assume Rihanna, so. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it, it, which is also interesting to note that she doesn't necessarily, you know, fully control your mind. It is just a thing of, like, she influences, like, what's already bubbling there, she can kind of, like, push you to kind of give into that ambition a little bit more like obviously Kyle like I said was already feeling that so she just kind of nudged him in that direction so that was kind of interesting because for Isabel she was tired of all this tired of everything you know connected to this life because having these powers and everything were a reminder of everything that she had done and you know can't even look at her own hands without wanting to chop them off and her and Noah she wanted things to kind of have she wanted to have a normal life in some shape or form it's like her and Noah aren't you know their relationship isn't normal because it's built on lies and secrets but she didn't want it to be like that anymore so that was the reason why she pushed for this and at first it seems like it does work I love the first thing she does is try to make Kyle take his shirt off i'm like why why dad why not just something else why not just have him like punch himself in the face or something it's like why specifically i, I don't know i just thought i guess it has to be something that i don't know because punching himself in the face and being like what the hell happened like would just be as i don't know i just thought it was kind of funny because it's interesting because even liz admits that she wasn't actually going to use this drug because for her it's a situation of like it was meant to be kind of like hey it gave her an outlet for all her rage and stuff like that but, you know, as a scientist, she was never going to actually use it on someone. Because no matter what the circumstances is, no matter what Isabel did, it wouldn't be right to kind of test this on somebody. Especially not knowing what it could do to her. But it does initially seem like, hey, it does block her powers. But sadly, it ends up being a situation that it eventually develops into something more. And ends up, it's killing her. Uh, it's interesting because we got introduced to their mom this episode, who, play, who was played by uh, Claudia Black. Um, I think... I feel like there's something specific I know her from because obviously like you know CW why she was on the uh, TV show uh, containment I never saw it but I saw bits and pieces of because you know my mom at uh I seen my mom watching it at one point in time like you know a year or two ago maybe um but there's that and also she plays Chloe she voices Chloe in the um Un uncharted video games so that's pretty uh dope uh but I feel, like I said, I feel like there's something specific I know her from. I'm not that familiar with her filmography, but I feel like there's something I've seen her in that I feel like I am well versed in. I'm just not 100% sure. But those are the two things that kind of come in my head the most when I, you know, when it comes to Claudia Black. So uh, that was kind of pretty dope. Um, it's actually kind of sad when you actually kind of hear conversations in this episode because for her, she kind of felt like she's kind of not close to her children because it's like, it seems like, you know, for them, I guess they always kind of kept her at a distance because it's like she was so good to them. It's like you and dad were so good to us. Like you gave us so much. Like how, we didn't really know how to ask for more. It, it, it wouldn't. I guess they didn't feel right because I guess it's also like you know because not only you know this is a secret between them, but it's also a secret they're keeping from their parents. And it's like who can, you can't really talk to them about that. So there's always going to be that little bit of distance. And you know, just just like and it's kind of sad because obviously that reflects itself in every aspect of their lives because they were reluctant to get. Close to, like, they got close to people, but they were super reluctant to get super close with people just because of having to harbor that secret of like being aliens and stuff like that and being afraid that someone might discover it. So that's um, a sad aspect to this, to the point like obviously Max doesn't want to tell her mom the truth about everything because obviously it's like, no, no, you know, Isabel's definitely got to get better. She has to get better and didn't want to worry her mom because then it turns into a whole thing of like, oh, what's going on? You even had the whole Noah situation. We see him kind of losing it this episode because it's like he feels powerless because no one's giving 
giving him answers and he doesn't know what's going on, which does beg the question, like, I'm skipping around and everything, but what is the explanation to, like, oh, yeah, Isabel's gone. Is it going to be, like, remove her to another facility? Like, what, what are they going to say about that? Like, because apparently it can take days, even months to potentially help Isabel. So it's like, what are you going to do about that, you know? Because no one's going to be asking questions. Their mom, uh, Max and uh, Isabel's mom is going to be asking questions. So, because even if they say, like, we transferred her to another facility just because her situation, like, they're going to be asking questions. So not less, like, you know, Isabel's, because she gave uh, Max a ring, not less it's going to be a thing of, like, yeah, she doesn't want to see you anymore type of thing. It's over, kind of breaking his heart just so that, you know... Because I thought that was her wedding ring she had given to Max to do that. I mean, maybe that might be what they ultimately end up doing. Still, there's a whole situation about their mom. But I guess he, he, the lie could be like, oh, she went out of town for a little bit, mom. But she'll be back soon enough. Or maybe that could be the argument they use with Noah. She ran away or whatever. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what that ultimately ends up being. What that ends up turning out to be. It's interesting, too, because obviously we have Michael and Liz kind of butting heads a little bit because Michael didn't appreciate it because it's like you create this thing to change people. Humans haven't had the best history of like what it's when it comes to them wanting people to kind of change, essentially, you know? And even the fact is, Michael's like, the fact of the matter is, you know, you can make the argument. It's like, he's like, for him, it's like, you're just manipulating Kyle and. You know, Max, they're not able to see you for what you really are. But obviously, he's just angry because it's like his sister is in his condition and everything. And he kind of feels like he probably can't do much. But, you know, for him, it's like the thing is, Max and Isabel are connected. The moment she got injected with that serum, he ran cold. The fact of the matter is, you getting your revenge against Isabel wouldn't do anything. You're saying the fact is, all you do is be hurting the wrong person because the only thing Max has ever done was love you. And so it's interesting because it's interesting because you never would think that you that Michael would be like the scientist, but he totally is because secretly he's been working on this whole situation. Obviously, um, it, it, like he ends up showing Liz her, his research and everything because at first he's reluctant to trust her, but it's like if it's about saving Isabel because it's about making sure that Max doesn't see her die. Like this is about protecting Isabel by protecting Max by saving Isabel because they know that if because of their connection, it's going to crush him. Uh, we don't know what kind of trauma it will cause losing Isabel, especially because they're psychically connected like that. He'll probably feel it ten times stronger than any other loss, you know? So, I do love that, though. It's like, wait, this is where you've hidden all your alien research? Oh, uh, this doesn't look like a hole uh, that leads to where all the secrets of the universe are hidden? And she's like, no. Nope. Well, like, that's the point. I get it now. And so... It's interesting because it turns out he has, obviously he's been always searching for a way back home and it seems like he's trying to rebuild their ship is kind of what he, like when he was telling her not to look under now, I was like, that's most likely what that is. It was probably prototypes to him trying to rebuild the ships and everything that it came in. But um, it's really fascinating to kind of have to see these two, like obviously amongst any of the siblings, I feel like they butt heads the most. Like... Because obviously, like, Liz has her issues with, you know, some of the siblings. Obviously, like, her and Max have the closest relationship. Obviously, she has issues with Isabel. But I feel like her and Michael definitely butt heads. But essentially, seeing them kind of work together and everything. Also, the uh, the liquid he pulls out from this uh, the eggs that stored them was pretty dope. Especially because it, like, evaporates the moment it touches Earth's atmosphere. So that's pretty dope. It's also interesting, too, that the ships are weak to silver. It makes you wonder, what is it about silver that, is it like an element what's in silver that, because it's like, because you would think silver would hurt them too, but obviously Isabel gets covered in it at the end of the episode, where there was no issue, it was just meant to be able to get her to like, you know, kind of pick, pick through the like, you know, uh, eggs, you know, so that she could, you know, be kind of basically put on stasis, so that was interesting. And also, they also brought up another interesting thing I thought was fascinating was like, yeah, the last time they came out of those pods, they had no memories, but who's to say like the same thing won't happen to Isabel, so they've got to promise to keep all her memories and be like a reminder of everything, even if she comes out of there and forgets everything, forgets them, which is kind of something that comes up this episode because Max had asked his mom about like them when they were younger, apparently like they didn't speak a word until one day they just suddenly started talking, almost as if they had been watching, trying to learn and absorb all of human language and then kind of finally spoke it themselves after they were ready and already consumed all of it, which is kind of interesting. 
Even the fact is that Michael back then was drawing all these symbols. So it's interesting because it seems like their alien instincts naturally were there, I guess because they were younger and it was still kind of like, like I guess you could make the argument that they were in kind of system reset. So, but somewhere in their subconscious, their alien programming, whatever, was still kind of running on reserves and was kind of acting out in that regard. What was interesting, though, is like apparently they were crying the moment he kept drawing the symbol. That might have either just been like because he was obsessively drawing it. It was either because they were crying because like we don't want other people to know what we are. You're going to draw attention to us. Or maybe it was a subconscious reminder of like, oh, this is our home that we left behind because it's like we had a life. We just don't remember it for some reason, which is interesting considering the fact is they were kids. But to be fair, who's to say where they're from? They didn't live like, you know, they might be. Well, I forgot how like they were. I feel like old enough to like be conscious and aware of everything when they were younger. Like obviously this is before they ended up on Earth and inside those eggs and everything. Maybe they lived a happy life and seeing that symbol was just a reminder of a life that they no longer could remember. Like their subconscious was trying to remember but they couldn't quite scratch the itch or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of fascinating because it turns out like you know the symbol that Max because Max wasn't even like lying when he was trying to tell Cam the other day of like no he didn't know what that symbol meant and, like subconsciously he got it tattooed on his body but he didn't really know the significance of it but now he does it's connected to all of it it's interesting because the moment he's touching the uh, the ship the egg he ends up moving his hand and you can see a slight faint uh, symboling of that symbol so it's connected to them the way Michael kind of figures it out later on saying suggesting that it's a beacon because it's actually kind of sad how he ended up finding about it it's kind of a bittersweet thing is that Maria had him fix the sign and it's like oh yeah that sign was meant to be away from Maria's mom because she has a tendency to wander it's supposed to be like a beacon so she can always find her way home and it's like oh that's it's sweet but it's just also sad at the same time but that inspires Michael to be like oh it's a beacon so for what exactly I guess to let their other species know where they are so there's that. Then there's the Alex day. That took me by surprise. Alex is like, oh yeah, I know all this stuff about aliens. And then he knocks his dad out. It's like, you know, obviously it was for this situation, but you know it also kind of had to feel good to be like, oh, put him in his place. Uh, also, we find, like, maybe that had come up before. I didn't realize Alex was super smart like that. Apparently, I guess that's what he kind of did in the military was like kind of hack into other stuff. And it's like, oh, your systems and stuff like that are terrible. So I'm eventually find out about stuff. He had looked into the alien stuff. Um, a lot of conspiracies and stuff like that led back to his dad. His dad tried to be like, everything I'm doing is to protect you, son. He's like, no, stop BSing. Because the fact is his dad was always cruel to him. So it's like, don't pretend that this was ever about me. It, you, the fact is you brought Kyle in. But he's like, oh, Kyle, Kyle's not my obligation. You're my son, blah, blah, blah. It's like the way you treat your son and now you want to act like, oh, you're my son, even though you act like he's so embarrassing to you because he's gay. It's like, no, it's because you think I'm weak because I'm gay. And the fact is that you think I'm going to screw up your operation. That's what this is all about. So don't pretend like it's some fatherly duty. I mean, especially let's not forget, you know, we as the audience saw some of the abuses way uh, that was thrown uh, Alex's way. Even to the fact is, let's not forget, we know how Michael's hand got broken on those years ago. You know, so no telling what happens when no one's around, you know. So it was just kind of interesting that he tried to give that to the fence, you know. It's like maybe in some weird twisted way, he does. Because he ends up bringing up the fact is that this whole thing destroys lives. It destroyed their lives. It destroyed, you know, uh, Kyle's family's life. Maybe it's a situation, you know, because once you're in the know, you can't unsee and unknow what you know. And so you always see enemies everywhere. So maybe that was the reason why he drunk, maybe. Because it seemed like he was a little drunk during that whole Michael incident. So maybe that's why he's so angry and why he's still drunk all the time. Maybe he did that because he knows exactly who Michael was. I mean, he figured it out this episode but maybe somewhere some level he knew but I kind of doubt that it does seem like it was just kind of like oh you're a piece of shit it's kind of interesting because he even tried to make Alex be like oh yeah like he's a, he's the enemy it's people like him that have always come causing problems they're uh, you know all attacking people you know unprovoked and stuff like that which is like that's one side of things it's it's that's the thing the victors are, are the ones that always get to write history things are never that black and white they're more to that situation like the reports might be written like the aliens attack but that might not be the case the fact is once again it's like you want to see enemies everywhere so you're going to see enemies everywhere but it's kind of interesting because alex was like 
basically, hey, when it's all said and done, you're going to get this new position teaching somewhere else, and then you're going to stay there and never come back to Roswell. When he, he handed his dad his gun back, I was actually scared because part of me was like, there's actually some part of my brain that was thinking, like, he'd actually shoot you. I don't know why. Even the way he was looking at his gun made me think, like, he might have considered shooting you. And I kind of expected that might have been the case when he, when uh, Alex turned his back. I don't know why. Like, you know, like I said, in his own messed up, twisted way, maybe he legitimately is trying to protect Alex. Maybe that's what this really was all about. Sadly for Alex, it's like, you know, his dad doesn't have to be there because he has Cameron there watching. Because obviously he's got Cameron, you know leveraged up because it's like yeah I can I can always get your sister sent back to like a max penitentiary prison and stuff like that so she kind of has no choice not only is she supposed to be keeping an eye out for all the alien stuff but also looking into Alex and stuff like that report it all to Matt uh to his his dad I guess for the purposes of trying to get him leverage over Alex so but Alex knowing what he knows now what is he going to do is he going to confront Michael is he just going to you know is he going to subtly bring it up is going to be for Front. I'm curious to see how he's going to handle it, especially because Alex being as smart as he is and the fact is that him and Michael have that connection, Michael might bring him into this world and be like, yo, look at all of this. I was actually kind of wondering if they were going to do that with Noah because I thought Noah was going to be there and it's like, oh, how are you going to convince Noah to let you take, you know, Isabel out of the hospital and it's like that never came up, but still, you know, so I'm like, I kind of get the feeling like we might be on the cusp of Michael letting Alex know everything, especially because Alex already knows a lot, just not everything. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where all of this is going to take us going forward. I didn't talk about it, but I should also bring up, I did like that whole Kyle um, story that he ended up telling, essentially, because Isabel's like, why are you being so kind to me? For him, it's like, essentially, it was kind of that story of like, you know, it's like, oh, this school shooting, and it was like, oh, there was the person that was responsible for it, and he was like, okay, so who was the one that did it? And the guy he was working with was like, shut up and do your job. And that's, that's the interesting and hard thing about being a doctor. You're not supposed to ask about who, like, you see an injured person in front of you, you, you know, you know, whole aspect the um the oath that they take do no harm so it's like you heal anyone that comes through your doors the moment you come through that door no matter what you do you get you get stitched up and healed which is like obviously you can see the bad side and the good side but the thing is it's all about saving lives everything else from the outside is meant to be in place to kind of handle what happens afterwards but like their job is to save lives you know and that's what matters you know like I said, you can see the good and the bad that comes with a situation like that. And it's a particular case, obviously, you see the good because it's like it's him looking past how he might feel about Isabel, even um, what Isabel's done, and just seeing her as someone that's sick that needs his help, you know? Kind of further proof of just showing you how much Kyle has grown from, like, that douchey dude he was uh, back in high school, obviously. There was also that interesting thing about Isabel telling Max that it was okay it was actually a good thing that she ended up leaving because it's interesting because she was like trying because Michael confessed and was like yeah we're the reason why you left because Max felt guilty he was going to confess everything so we got you to leave that summer before um, Rosa's uh, funeral and without Max I wonder did she say it just simply to make him feel better but she was like the fact is I was going to go anyway because obviously it was more about like hey forgive Isabel you know no matter what she did you know because it's like thanks to me leaving I was able to see two oceans and once again it's a thing of like she even said to herself it's like she was already planning on leaving it's just Isabel just kind of nudged her in that right direction so and almost sad because it's like for Liz it's like maybe it's just kind of further proof that maybe we weren't meant to be you know. I don't know, it was, just, it was just kind of an interesting uh, thing. But like I said, I'm very interested to see where all this takes us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about to the next time with me. Be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.